increasingly social scientific and psychological theories are being used to develop agent-based models of behavior. And as you probably know, in the social sciences there is an abundance of theories. Theories that describe, for example, very detailed uh, processes, but also very grand theories. I like to compare these theories with balls. So, for example, we have very specific tiny theories, perhaps like this one, uh, addressing a very specific cognitive process in people. We can also have more middle-range theories, for example, on how people interact. But we can also have really very large theories that cover a lot. For example, theories, in, theories on needs basically address all human behavior. Now, if we have all these balls, that's very nice, but the problem that we are encountering is that we cannot click them together. They just do not match together. We cannot integrate them. And I think this is one of the big challenges in computational social science. When we formalize theories in agent-based modeling, we translate them into code. And when you put the theory into code, you lose something of the original richness of the theory. Uh, I like to compare that with building a ball from Lego. And if you do that, you lose some of the roundness of the ball. So it's a simplified model of a more realistic ball. So you lose something on the one hand, but on the other hand, because it is code, you con can connect new things to it. For example, you can add a new theory on, for example, legs to the existing model and make it walk. In this way, we are capable of making theories computable and bring them into the realm of complex dynamical systems. Think of the new possibilities this brings to connect theories on human needs with decision-making heuristics. For example, how does our social need, be it a conformity or an anti-conformity drive, influence our political ideas? How does our fear for a disease influence our perception of the risks? And how do we communicate that to others? And if you experience an internal conflict of needs, for example, as a vegan, you live together with meat eaters. Do you try to convince the others to become vegan? Break friendships if they don't? Or just give up on being vegan? Running large-scale experiments with realistically behaving artificial populations opens new fascinating perspectives for studying social dynamics and group behavior. Connecting theories on interactions between people and networks, uh, on how they influence each other and their cognitive processes, opens the door for a generative social science, as Joshua Epstein calls it. A generative social science is capable of growing social phenomena, and in this way helps us in better understanding the social dynamical processes that are so important in a lot of issues in our species.